Hello again, everyone. Today I am here to show you some new handmade watercolors that I got from the Art of Soil. And I have to say that since I have joined Instagram or uh, posting more and looking more on Instagram, I have been buying a lot more from companies that I had not heard of before. Uh, Instagram seems to know what I want and gives me ads accordingly, <laughs> which can be good or bad. Uh, but this is one of the companies that I purchased from because I saw them on Instagram. And uh, all of their watercolors are made, uh, as this says, small batch, soil-based watercolors handcrafted by combining soil, pigment, watercolor, media, and heart and love, I assume is what they mean. So this is just a little sample card that came with this. So I'm gonna swatch this as well today, and then I'm gonna open this stuff up. But before I open this up, so this is the color combination that I got called Farmer's Market. This was actually really inexpensive because it was part of, uh, either it's the set, the type of set it is is being discontinued, or uh, I think they also had some sets that had just like a slight thing wrong with them. I think this is one of the ones they were discontinuing, so it doesn't have any flaws as far as I know. But it's gonna be these colors here, and it's hematite, ooh, ferrohydrite, and this is just called number seven, and Sprout. So I thought this was a really nice color combo. And uh, it, you don't really have a primary palette here because you just have green instead of a blue, but you definitely have some reddish tones, yellow and the green. And uh, on the back of this card, it shows you some of the other colors that they have. Uh, this this one just appealed to me because it was, it was a small little set so I could try them out and also I uh, the colors that were in here the individual colors I liked a lot and then it also comes with this little postcard <laughs> that says yay soil okay so I'm gonna put these off to the side this one I'm gonna keep because I'm gonna do the sample and then it came wrapped like this in this little this looks like map paper and that's kind of nice because I, oops, oh, it looks like the the actual watercolors stuck to the paper. So let me go ahead and put those. Well, that's kind of nice though, because it shows you how much you actually get in this little set. I would say that's probably the equivalent of like a quarter pan for these. And, uh, you know, sometimes when things dry, they do shrink. So this is not too unusual to have um, this kind of, Oh, I think I have those backwards. This kind of um, it being loose in the container when you get it. It actually, just touching it, it has a really nice sort of supple feel to these. So I I'm, I'm have a feeling that they're going to be pretty easy to re-wet. And then this, you know, it's just a little piece of scrap paper. I probably will save this for collage because I, I tend to like things like this to save for collage. So I'm going to put that off to the side. I'm going to be swatching these on my regular... Actually, let me move out a little bit so you can see that. My regular Pentallic field book. Uh, this has been coming in and out of stock at Amazon. I'm For some reason, this particular book has always been fairly uh, inconsistent as far as availability. I really, really love this Pentallic watercolor paper. Uh, it's archival, obviously, but it's not cotton. But as far as a non-cotton paper goes, I find it really, really nice, especially for swatching because I don't need to be precious with it. It's not super expensive. Um, I originally got this sort of as a um, as a sale purchase on uh, Zulily, I think. They had a bunch of Pentallic products, and I got some, and I was, like, really, really impressed with it. I think I'll actually do it here next to these beam watercolors or beam gouache that I swatched on the channel the other day. So let's go ahead and put these over that so that that's not too distracting. I'm going to put that there. I am going to be swatching with my Rhapsody uh, Kalinsky Sable brush from um, Jerry's Artorama. I will put a link to this brush down below. Uh, they vary in price. Jerry's has a lot of really great super sales, basically, and I stock up on things that I think I might like to try or things that I'm running out of whenever they have a big sale. Although it does seem to seem to me anyway that they're having a bunch of sales all the time. So I am going to put a little dollop of water on each of these before I start. It doesn't seem like they'll need it, but just in case I am going to do that, I'll do that on the little sample card as well. 
Okay, so I'm rinsing my brush off in a little pot of water here to the side, trying to get my brush nice and wet. And uh, let's, yeah, let's just go ahead with this palette first. Oh yeah, super nice. Don't really need to worry about uh, wetting. Ooh, those are beautiful. Those are really, really nice. So this one is that hematite. I'm actually gonna keep this little card over here for my reference so that I know which colors these are. That is beautiful. Love it. Um, yeah, and again, super easy to re-wet. And that is that ferrohydrate, if that's how you say it. Again, really beautiful. And I'm actually going to do this next. This is that number seven that didn't really have a, have a name. Oh, again, beautiful. They seem very nicely pigmented. Plenty of pigment in there. And then this is the sprout color. Oh, that's lovely too. I'll put a little bit more here on the top. Beautiful. Oh, these are so wonderful. I'm really, really, uh, I'm really, really happy with those. Okay, so let's do this little sample. This just says it's number 77, so I don't know what color that is. This one's a little lighter. Um, so, you know, with natural pigments, it really varies. Some of them are going to be lighter than others or, you know, not as saturated as others. Quite frankly, that's one of the reasons why I chose this particular set because they had some really nice saturated looking colors. But those are beautiful. Just based on that quick sampling there, I would highly recommend these. It was like, you know, beautifully smooth coming off of the palette. The hematite especially is really, really beautiful. And as it is drying, I can see a lot of beautiful granulation. I can see a little bit of granulation in these two as well, but this one is definitely way up there with lots of granulation, which is true for most brands of that particular mineral. Okay, so I'm gonna put these off to the side and push this up higher here to the camera so that you can see them. Really, really pretty. And even the super light one is also really, really pretty. Let's go ahead and try, I'm gonna try, um, I'm gonna actually try mixing them on the paper because I don't have a little palette here. I'm going to try mixing the hematite, which now that it's been wetting is even more uh, saturated. I'm gonna mix the hematite with uh, this yellow number seven color. Lovely, super lovely. And let's go ahead and mix just a little bit of green down here at the bottom. Yeah, and this is consistent. I mean, the, the mixing works fine, but this is consistent with um, some handmade or uh, mineral-based watercolors is sometimes it's better just to use them right out of the box or, you know, as is instead of mixing them because sometimes, I mean, the mixes, that's kind of pretty, but you know, they're, they're pretty just on their own, so I don't think that you need to do that necessarily. All right, well, that's all I had for you today. Feel free to subscribe to keep track of future videos on my channel. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. I'm going to put this up here again so that you remember who it is, The Art of Soil. I will put a link to them down below. I hope to see you next time, but in the meantime, have a great day. Thanks so much. Bye.